Aloha. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and I'm coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach uh, on a clear day from my condo uh, here right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church. My, I, I can look right down the window, and I'm basically right over the altar of St. Augustine's Church right next door. On a clear day, uh, I can look across between the saddle of Diamond Head and the Koalau Range I, uh, volcano. I can see Molokai in the distance. And uh, yesterday, Cindy and I, my bride, went out. And we surfed Perfect Surf at Queen's Break. It's named after Queen Lilio Kalani, who, um, whose estate, actually, our condo was built on. So it's very sacred ground here. And we went out, and we just caught beautiful. I mean, I'm ne- I don't think I've ever surfed Queen's on such a perfect day. It was hollow. It was way overhead waves rolling through and a real happy crowd out there. And she and I dropped in real hollow, late drops free fall drops and then she would get up and turn and I put her in an overhead lift and uh, and as I'm surfing I'm looking at Diamond Head in the distance it was just a beautiful beautiful day but you know as much as I love the surfing of, in Hawaii the thing that I love about Hawaii the most is aloha is that feeling of love for for each other that's here on the islands and uh, of course you get that from the local people so I thought I'd drag some guy into my into our uh, studio he's not in my studio but on the Skype uh, my friend, uh, the catech- a catechist for the Diocese of Honolulu, he, he grapples, he rolls Gracie style. He just earned his purple belt, which in Gracie is a really big deal. And, uh, and uh, he uh, has a great love for the Lord. He's got five children, and one is on its way. So he's a good Catholic. He, went, he's, he studied theology at Steubenville. So, I mean, we got it all when we, when we have Dallas Carter on our show. So, Dallas, thanks for being on our show. Aloha. Aloha, Bear. I, I thank you so much for having me on. I always I always love when you're in town and when we can get together, whether it's on your show or just to hang out. It's always fun, man. I think we first met at a GK Chesterton meeting. Remember that? Back in the that day. was that was right. I, I, I remember that clearly. And uh, I remember hearing some of your insights. I didn't know who you were, but I heard some of your insights. And I remember thinking, I got to hang out with this guy. <laughs> you know? And you were using big words. <laughs> hey, you, you you were too, so you know. <laughs> uh, but but you uh, you know getting to know you there, and then you came when when my show I think was just on a couple radio stations. Uh, you were one of my very first guests, you and Jason Jones on my show. So That's we've right. come we've come a come a long way since then. Uh, but you know we're we're here in the islands, and we're going to be shooting Long Ride Home, uh, season three. Uh, Dallas Carter knows. Uh, Molokai very well and St. Damien and St. Marianne. So you'll be uh, hosting. Well, you're going to go with us over there and you'll be giving us uh, your your knowledge. I've been down to, I've been down to Kalapapa Peninsula many times. I used to have a home in Molokai. My dad was a deacon, believe oh, it or wow. not. And I'm a member of the Sons of Hawaii Motorcycle Club, Molokai chapter. But I never uh, really made, I, I would hike down to the leper colony, but I never actually visited it. So this will be really cool. Uh, you're coming with us and 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 guiding us and and introducing it's us. It's a it, being down there every single time is just transformative. I mean, no matter how frequently I go, every single time I go, I come back. I I, I come back to Oahu changed, you know. And it's such a, a powerful, beautiful, but you know, at the same time, because of the story, uh, such a such a deep place, you know. And so it's it's always beautiful to be out there and. And I'll allow the Lord to, to, you know, transform whatever in my heart needs to be transformed. So I always look forward to going. Well, you're down there beneath the highest sea cliffs in the world. And I met someone the other day who was going to be on our show, too. Probably meet us down. I think he'll meet us maybe at Kalapapa, the leper colony there. Uh, his name is Andrew. And he, you know that house on the north shore of, of, of Molokai? There's only one house, and it sits yeah. on a cliff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's, that's his family. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. You, the only way you see that house is if you've flown by by helicopter or a, or a, back when I was flying my uh, an airplane, I used to fly a little Cessna past there, and it's like it's a couple hundred feet up above the water. Uh, you there's no there, obviously there's no road. The only way you can get there is by boat, basically, and uh, so it's the most it's just the most beautiful setting. It's like every painting in the world that you see of an island that would be it, but uh, the, but then the reality sets in of living there, and he's moving there with his new bride and. Uh, you know, it's his, his family has that place. So Andrew will be with us. He'll be playing some awesome. music, too. So we're going to have a good time in Molokai. And like I said, my dad was a deacon there. So Molokai is really a, a powerful place. When you land there, you feel 
I like feel God's presence there. You know, you know, for sure. And, and, and there's something about the people there. We talk about the Aloha spirit. We talk about, you know, uh, that, that powerful presence here in Hawaii of sharing Aloha. And when I go to Molokai, I, I, I just feel rejuvenated. You know, I'm native Hawaiian. Um, I speak the language and I grew up in that culture. But going to Molokai is just a whole nother level of that, you know. And so uh, every time I go there, I have many friends there and I just I love being there. And in fact, um, I, my, my wife, my wife isn't always a huge fan of when I go there because I tell her I just want to stay. So I'm trying to get her to move yeah. there with me, you know. But uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, it, we, I used to have a home on the west side down there by Kinani Kai and the Kulokoi. My parents did, too. And I remember the first time I went to Molokai, getting off the plane, it says, uh, slow down, you're in Molokai, I think is what it That's says right. there, right? And it's the friendly isle. But some people can hardly wait to get off that island. I've seen yeah. people show up and like, there's no shopping. Yeah, there is. There's a hardware store. No, but I mean, there's no place to shop. Well, that's Waikiki. This is Molokai. And then people will say, you know what Molokai really needs? And I go, yeah, they need for you to leave because we don't need anything here. You know. By the you way, know, I did a, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was going to share. I did a, a retreat down there. Uh, was it last year? There was um, uh, a priest over there. Uh, that was at St. Damien Church at that time. And uh, Father Bill Petrie, who was a priest who actually uh, worked with Mother Teresa. And, you know, he, uh, he, he was a pastor at that church, and he invited me to come down. And we went down to this place. Um, you, remember, you know where there's that old resort? It's kind of abandoned now. They uh, had abandoned that resort. I think it's on the West End. I'm trying to remember uh, exactly, you know, where it was. But it was like a an hour four-wheel drive off of, you know, a little beaten path there. Um, it's called Kalpoa. And, oh, okay. uh, yeah, and Kalpoa, I remember, I remember we went down there, and this is really Molokai living. I had no clue that we were going, I thought we were going to stay at the church, but we, we, we four-wheeled all the way out to Kalpoa. There was no electricity, very little running water, no cell phone connection, and I yeah, get there. And I'm right, like, no cell phone. And, that's, yeah. and, and I'm like, where, where, where are we going to sleep? And, all of these local boys, all these Molokai boys, it was great because they just got me a cot. We were sleeping on the sand. I mean, we were just going to sleep right, outside. Right. And I, I remember when I woke up, it was a kind of a surreal experience. I woke up uh, one of the mornings, uh, and uh, there was maybe four or five monk seals sleeping, you know, 10 feet away from me. <laughs> That's so rare. And people, it's so rare to see a monk seal. Last time I was there, we saw one too, by the way, but so rare. So, it is uh, rare. So, now, is that, is that over by Laal Point where you were? Where were you? I think so. It, it was a couple <laughs> years ago. Yeah. And honestly, I remember getting on, get, getting to the airport. They put me in a truck, and I'm, I'm talking story with, the, with, with Father. Are you sitting and, in the back of the truck, in the bed yeah, of the truck? absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's, before, that's Molokai style, yeah. And before I knew it, I was at this beautiful place, yeah. and I didn't even know how we got there. But uh, yeah. I have videos and stuff. But, you know, on Oahu, whenever there's a monk seal, I mean, the DLNR comes down. There's, like, this big deal <laughs> The over yellow there, caution warning, yellow tape exactly. goes up around it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Over there, there's four or five, and no one blinks an eye. You know? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, you know, I, you know, I just know Molokai. You know, we would go, uh, we'd we'd drop in the water. Um, my sons, when they would come out there, I would say, I'm gonna cook you breakfast and dinner, but I'm not gonna make you lunch. You gotta go sh poke fish for that, you know. And oh, yeah. they were desperate. They would poke some pretty ugly looking fish. I know. Uh, but we would drop in over there on one side of the point and let the ocean drift us around the point, and we'd have our Hawaiian slings. This is at night, of course, after dark, and a flashlight, which I don't know if it's exactly legal, but the little lobsters would come out of their little caves in the in the volcanic rock, and we would have a feast. Oh, yeah. You know, just an absolute feast. So we no, love, for sure. And we love the island of Molokai. Do you know Gina Jeanette Spencer over there, by the way? I believe I do. Yes, I do. I do know yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, Gene Gene got me hooked up with a he's the the chapter president with the Sons of Hawaii Motorcycle Club, which is uh pretty was a pretty, you know, tough club back in the day. They're the ones that met the Sons of Hawaii at the I mean the Hells Angels at the airport forty five years ago and sent them off, you know. Uh but now they're it's really great to ride with them. I saw them a few weeks ago. A uh, big pack, about thirty of them here in the uh, uh, of us I should say of us here in the island of Oahu, and uh, I, I love it because we always pray before we ride, you know. That's awesome. And I said, I haven't ridden with the sons in a while, and they go, once a son, always a son. Yeah, so That's they awesome. Gave, yeah, they gave me my colors, um, I don't know, 2008 or 2000, I don't know, a long time ago. We rode over on the Big Island. 
Oh, so, great. Um, so, we're, so season three, what, which you're going to be uh, one of the cast members of, we're going to be riding here on the island of Oahu, doing a lot of water shots and beautiful cinematic stuff. And then you're going to go with us to Molokai, and then we go to the Big Island, and we'll be riding over on the Big Island. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a great. great time. So we're talking with Dallas Carter. He's a catechist with the Diocese of Honolulu. He's a business man, but he loves he loves uh, to teach and to work with young people. Uh, we're going to talk about that when we get back. Uh, he had the chance of uh, leading the catechism classes at a at a, a small Catholic school here, and he had 22 people. Uh, uh, who are not Catholic uh, made their baptismal vows. So that was pretty cool. Dallas Carter, um, we'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Go there to our store and order stuff for the, <laughs> man, for the man in your life. The, the Long Ride Home DVD set is, is awesome, and we got shirts and whiskey mugs and coffee cups and books and all kinds of stuff there, as we say in Hawaii. So... Go to deepadventure.com and get your stuff uh, for fa- for your for the Father's Day. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. I'm a real lonely guy today. My wife. Uh, flew to San Diego last night, and she's meeting with her best friend, uh, Christy, and they're going to do something radical. They're going to run a marathon over there, that rock and roll marathon in San Diego. Something's wrong with them. And Cindy's been, <laughs> Cindy's been training really hard for this marathon. She's been laying on the beach, you know, stretching. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yesterday we were surfing, and she kind of cut her foot, you know, just a little bit like paper cut on the reef. But it'll be her excuse, I'm sure, for coming in, you know, with a bad time. She's got so she's that, got that all laid up. But we're talking with my friend Dallas Carter. I just remember meeting Dallas and just going, oh, I just love this guy. He was uh, uh, he studied theology at uh, Franciscan University. By the way, because of you, then I uh, I went online and I began my master's degree there. That's awesome. That's I heard about well. that. That's great. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's you know, I I I re- I probably maybe. I, Two or three hours every day I'm studying anyway, right? So I might as well mm. be getting my degree. Exactly. But I, but I got a little bit frustrated. Like, they want me to write papers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I've got to study the next thing. But I love yeah, – You so, have a radio show. Can, can you – you know, be, does that count? Just, you know, yeah, come to my radio show you, instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I was actually I, – I think I was I was inducted into the Catholic Sports Hall of Fame, and I met, like, the, the dean of students or something from Steubenville was there. This is, I, I don't even know where we were. I think it was – in Chicago, yeah, and uh, and so I kept t- prodding him to do to talk to my professor. You know, it didn't help. It didn't oh, help. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to do a B a B average, right? Something like that. And yeah. I was going like, well, okay, I, I didn't know, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna get all the learning I can, but I, these papers, I don't want to spend all kind of time <laughs> doing it. So uh, I got like a C plus, and then another C plus, and they're like, dude, you got to bring it up to a B average, or you're gonna be in trouble. So I'm in trouble. Oh man! The school monitors are are after me. Uh, well, you know, I uh, C plus. We we can work on that, man. There there are some things we can do to help but you I, there. But... I'll, I'll send you my papers so you can write them for me. There you go. <laughs> hey, but we're talking with Dallas Carter and Dallas. I want to talk about this because it's summertime, dude. You had an amazing transformation. You had once one point had gone up to I think, I mean, people could see you. We have our YouTube show, by the way, the same show that's airs on 500 radio stations on EWTN also, and Sirius FM, by the way, also is on our YouTube channel. You can see Dallas. He looks ripped. He's a, he's an MMA guy. He rolls Gracie style. He just earned his purple belt, which is a big thing in the Gracie tradition, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But you had gotten up to 300 pounds. I want to hear that story. Yeah, actually, I, I got up way past that. The, the heaviest I ever weighed in was about 385. And I remember that day because I went to the doctor and the scale in the front only goes up to 350. They had to take me behind to another special scale that they use for animals. And I had to be weighed on there. And I weighed up close to about 385. I, I had a 4X t-shirt. I had a waist size 56. It was just out of control. You know, and a lot of it was I, I blamed it on my, my heritage. I thought, well, you know, Hawaiian people are big. And I kind of just, you know, went in with that mindset that there's nothing I could do about it. But 
you know, what, what happened was my, my wife, we got married. God bless her. She married me even though I was just like this honking, gigantic guy. And uh, she was pregnant with our first daughter. And I remember being at the, the hospital when my daughter was born. And uh, I was the second person to see my daughter. The first was, the, was a doctor. And then I was number two. My, it was my wife's first, so she was out of it. She didn't you know, quite see the baby right away. I, I remember holding the baby, and it was such a beautiful thing. But it ended up being so tragic in my mind because after about five minutes, I don't know if you've ever held five pounds. Well, you're a tandem surfer. You would know. Holding something out straight <laughs> like this for more than a couple of minutes hurts. You know, it starts to burn. And then my body was so big that I was holding the seven-pound girl, you know, far away from my body because my body was so large. It actually hurt to hold my child. And at that point, I knew something had to change. And so I made this, this decision to be healthy. And I started to, you know, no surgery or anything, you know, like that. Uh, I just worked on a proper diet, eating better, making sacrifices, and working out. And over a period of about two and a half years, I lost over 200 pounds, you know, and, and got into the best shape of my life. And trust me, I still like food. I still like beer. I'm still a regular guy, but I, 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 I was able to find that balance and that moderation. And now with jujitsu, jujitsu has been a, a huge part of, you know, me staying in shape and of me being active and all my kids are involved in jujitsu and you know, they're pretty active, you know, and my, my, my kids love the water, they surf, they do all that kind of stuff, but jujitsu is kind of like our family deal, you know? And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And it's been a, it's been a, a crazy journey. And um, a lot of people who lose that amount of weight, they gain it back. It's really hard for them to keep it off. But I think that having more children, having them keep me, you know, active, running around, being involved in jujitsu tournaments and, you know, uh, things like that, it's kept me on my feet and kept me healthy. Well, I want to hear, let's, let's go back to this though. So you have this moment, this, this moment when you realize it's like now or never. Right. You know, unless you're carrying an ukulele, you're not allowed to weigh that much in Hawaii. <laughs> but, uh, of course, that's a shout-out to a brother is who we love so much. Um, but you uh, you said you changed your eating habits. You you started to work out. I, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of guys out there that, are, that, are, that listen to my show, that love my show. And because of the way America works right now, you know, the, the preservatives that are in the food and the high-carb sort of uh, uh, food that's available out there, it's almost like they wonder how I don't know how, how I'm gaining this weight, but I just keep gaining it. Yeah. I don't know what to do about it. And then they're like, so it, it, it's, it's tough to even to have a workout. Right. And so this is summer. This is the time to get this is the time. I'm, I'm, you know, we do a show twice a year. Where we challenge men and women, of course, to get in shape. So let's get more specific about that thing. You said you changed your eating regimen. You didn't go on a diet to lose weight. You changed your eating regimen for regimen for the rest of your life. That's right. And what, and what did you do? Well, you know, the, 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 the big thing for me was I, I had to be, you know, educated on what proper portion sizes were, you know. And when I learned about, you know, how portions work, it blew my mind. Because, for example, just one small anecdote, you can eat a, a cheeseburger from one of those fast food restaurants. And it's like this big doesn't really, really fill you up. Or you could have, you know, three pieces of chicken uh, you know, some brown rice and some vegetables, and it's the same amount of calories. It just blows you away. In other words, so you can it, eat a lot more volume. Exactly. And so yeah. once you learn, you know, the things that you can only have a little bit of or the things you can have a lot of, you start making better decisions, right? You start eating uh, healthier. Not <laughs> Trust me, it's not because I, I, I love the taste of healthy food. It's because I get to eat more, you know? And so right. I, I was able to figure that part out. And you know, feel satisfied, never go hungry, never did I go to bed feeling like, oh, I'm suffering because I'm not eating or anything like that. I just made better choices. And instead of eating, you know, uh, a Big Mac four times a day, I, I had healthier choices. And so it wasn't just about the, the portion control education taught me, you know, what I can eat a lot of and what I shouldn't eat too much of. And that was the fun. That was the beginning anyway, of me figuring out my path to eating healthy. Well, you know, going, you know, going to fast food restaurant, has to be taken off your list, basically. And really shopping anywhere within the inner aisles is usually not the best place to be shopping. Right. I know your wife had a big part of it, but, you know, even for me, I, I, as a bachelor, when I was a bachelor, I, I, I would make what I used to call my training food. I'd get, I would get hamburger meat, bunch of different kinds of vegetables and onions, 
cut them all up, put a little uh, spaghetti sauce in there, light, and just stir it up and make enough to last me for three days. Because I mean, I'm not I'm the worst cook in the world. But yeah, exactly. It's good. It's good. I had my fiber. I had my vegetables. But one of the big things I discovered with, in my situation, especially as a tandem surfer, surfer I have to weigh in, right? I have to make weight because right. my partner can't weigh less than half my body weight. Is when I started coming out, uh, cutting out the bad carbs. The I call them bad carbs. The the high sugar carbs like the bread, sure. the potatoes, not the vegetables, right? But anything that has a, a, a sugar content. I, I used to always say I'm hungry all the time. What's wrong with me? After two or three days of cutting out that sugar type carb, you're no longer hungry unless you're actually hungry. And like right. uh, like my I guess Joe Rogan uh, said said uh, the other day. He said, you know, when you're hungry and you're on a low carb regimen, the hunger comes from a different place. Right. Is that like no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think that what happens is once you cut off a lot of that processed sugar and you cut off a lot of those, uh, you know, um, I call them white, white carbohydrates, right? You know, there uh, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Carbohydrates that are white or can be white. So even like, you know, you know, like wheat bread, well, it's still refined, you know, and it's still right. not the best for you. Um, and so once you cut those out, what happens is your body starts looking for a different kind of fuel. So instead of burning just carbohydrates right away, it looks to, you know, your fat, uh, you know, to, to burn. And once you get your body into that point where fat becomes not the only thing it's burning, but the, the main source of fuel for the body, then you no longer, you know, crave or feel hungry for a white carbohydrate. Well, I'm going to make a confession to you right now, dude. I went to Nico's last night. And I ordered their mm. famous cheeseburger, double cheeseburger. Oh, so okay. good. <laughs> but the thing about Nico's is they, they, it's a very slim slice of bread. And we, and I get, and I only eat, uh, I like to have that taste of the cheeseburger, but uh, I get rid of most of the bread. I mean, I'll have a bite or two of the, with the bread and then I just get rid of it. And then I just eat the cheeseburger. But I mean, anyone who's been to Hawaii knows that knows Nico's famous. Oh yeah. Like in and out burger type only even better. For those once in a while, those. you got to spurge once in a while. You right. Know, you gotta, <laughs> well, we're, gonna, we're we're talking with Dallas Carter. We're going to come back and talk more about this. Now we're going to talk about your eating regimen. We'll talk more about the exercise regimen, how you drop 200 pounds. And and there's no excuse out there. We know we have the technology, as they said to the bionic man. That's Anybody right. can do this now. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My guest, Dallas Carter, will be right back. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. My daughter likes surfing out the uh... sorry. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and my co-adventure guide today is Dallas Carter. He will be a cast member of Long Ride Home Season 3. I know you're wondering, Season 3... We haven't in seen season two yet. Well, we're finishing up editing season two. It should be aired later this uh, year, uh, but that's not stopping us. The post-production work is always where all the work is, but we're going to be shooting in Hawaii season three. And so we have Dallas Carter is going to be one of our cast members and join us over in Molokai. And, uh, and Dallas is uh, a theol you know, he studied theology at university of Steubenville. He's a catechist here for the, for the diocese of Honolulu. Uh, we're talking to the, we're getting we're, we're challenging people uh, to get in shape and you know I'm going to say this uh, I, I see people will say my wife doesn't love me or my husband doesn't love me like he used to well I don't know how to say it other than just say maybe you gained a lot of weight and you're no longer as much fun you know once you gain too much weight you're le lethargic you can't go uh, for those long romantic walks you can't go out and play and uh, it's certainly not God's best for you, and it's really not who you're meant to be. You're meant to be, uh, you're meant to be uh, healthy and strong and vital. In fact, I have a friend, Dr. Lance Mackey. I encouraged him to call his 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 uh, longevity practice strong vital, because that's what that's what we need to be. And so, uh, one of the things we're doing it's we do this at we do this right after the New Year's Day resolution time, Dallas, and we do it at the beginning of the summer. Dallas Carter is here. He's He's not only all of that I mentioned, but he's also an MMA-type uh, grappler. He's a purple belt in the Gracie style jiu-jitsu, has five children, one on the way, and uh, and we're going to talk about how he lost 200 pounds. Hey, Dallas, 
Uh, for those who are watching our YouTube version of this, because this goes out over Sirius FM and 500 terrestrial radio stations, but also over YouTube, they're seeing a bunch of lockers. Where are you? Are you you're not at the? I know you're not at the MMA gym. What are all those lockers for? All right, so I went to a garage sale down the road, and I found these. These are in my garage. This is what happens when you have five children, and you need to keep them organized. So what you see back here are the is are the lockers for my children. They it all looks have just li- looks just like a gym locker. Yeah. 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 So that's what we have them for to keep their stuff organized. One's for shoes. One's for some of their you know uh, their gadget you know their gadgets and things like that. But uh, just a way to keep uh, a family of five kids organized is what that and is. And one more. And one more is on its way. One more on the way, due in November. That's so cool. Hey, so tell us now. Uh, so so the eating regimen is what we talked about before. And the thing people have to get get think about is their goal shouldn't be to lose weight. It should be to be eating healthy. And that is right. just, and the rest just takes care of itself. Um, you know, but I, I wear a Fitbit watch. If you can see it on YouTube. Uh, when I when I surf, I wear a Garmin. I've worn a Garmin now for as long as they've been out, you know. And uh, this year so far, I'm, I'm behind because I was wintering a little bit in Florida. But I put 192 miles of just surfing on my Garmin. That's great. You know, and that's not that's only about an hour and a half a day of surfing or something like that. Uh, and it doesn't take and, and people say, well, if you're going to work out, that takes too much time. It really takes no time. It doesn't take any time at all. Prayer and exercise take no time because whatever you whatever you it's an investment in time and being in shape makes you so much more um, ability. You're not lethargic. You think more clearly. You're more active. You get things done faster. You sleep a lot better. And the same thing when you have a prayer life. So uh, with my Fitbit watch, I try to get about 10,000 steps in a day. That's only five miles. But I have that goal, you know, and it, and, I wa- and it monitors for me. Did I do that? You know, and if I, so if I'm doing five miles a day of walking and three or four miles, three miles a day or so of surfing, I can't help but be healthy. Right. Um, unless I'm eating bad, of course. I have to get those both go. When I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, Dallas, I thought I would lose. I had like 25 pounds probably at the most of excess weight i thought i would lose all of it i only lost about half of it because i was eating the way i wanted to and i, I pedaled across in like 27 days wow. you think you would lose every single ounce of fat but no it has to be eating regimen and exercise so tell us about your ex what exercises you started at when you were at what were you weighing in at my my heaviest on record because I think I got heavier than this, but my heaviest on record was a, just about three hundred eighty five pounds. And you look so good now. So so what did you do for exercise, and how did that gradually progress? You know, so I, I my friend brought over a, a, a video, um, one of those P ninety X videos. You those know? are awesome, but how could they, you do that? I couldn't. <laughs> so I remember, I remember the very first day, the very first move of the very first video. The guy's like, get down and do as many push-ups as you can. Are you kidding? I mean, yeah. I, could do, I could do one on my knees. And you yeah. know what I did is my buddy kept working out because he was already in decent shape. And then I just walked around the neighborhood. You know, I just did whatever I could just to get some movement. And, you know, just like prayer and building virtue, it's just a slow process of doing the same habits every single day. You know, you can't, you can't pray for an hour a day if you can't even pray for 10 minutes a day. You know what I mean? You got to slowly build that up, and it's the same thing. Is I couldn't do a regular push up until I could do one on my knees. I couldn't do ten push ups until I could do ten on my knees. And you know, over a period of six, seven months, all of a sudden I could do a whole workout on one of those DVDs, and that was just the beginning. And then here's the key, I think, Bear, and you know, you're a great example of it. Is the best way to be healthy and the best way to to have a lifestyle, not just lose weight. Because it's just summer and I want to lose weight just for the summer and then go back and gain it all back. You have to find something you enjoy, something yeah. that is healthy, but something you enjoy. You have you have surfing, you have, you know, your your biking, you have these different things that you enjoy doing. I found jujitsu, you know, and because I love it so much, it's something that I don't even think about the fact that I'm burning eight hundred calories. In fact, I'm gonna go here in a couple hours and roll and I'm not thinking about the fact that I'm going to burn, you know, 800 calories. I'm thinking about how fun it is to be there and how much fun I'm having, you know, doing what I'm doing. And that's the key because that's where the longevity of a healthy lifestyle comes in. Something you enjoy, not something you feel obligated to do. Yeah, people people talk, 
people will talk to me. They go, dude, you're you're you're, you're so strong. I'm, you're so strong. And I go like, and they go, what, do you, what what's your workout? And I go, I, I I don't even like the word work. I just go play. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, Stand up paddle surfing is the best workout I've. I mean, possible in the Huge. universe. It's just, you know, it's one of the greatest. Rolling is definitely. It's really crazy. Good. But tell me, um, but tell me about those first six months. I want to. I want you to let us live a little bit, like the first day, the first week, the first month. Did you have setbacks? How did that? How did you get from when you started walking? Did you walk a mile, or did you walk a block, or how did, how does that whole progression? It kind of—it's almost like you have to get a little bit fit so that you can get fit. It's like right. you got to learn to read, so you—you you, eventually you read to learn, but first you got to learn to read. Yeah, like you got to so, start a little bit of a fitness so that you can get in in shape. Yeah. So what I did was this: is in my garage. If uh, my computer's kind of stationary, but if I were to turn it around, I could show you where I used to have this big whiteboard. And on that whiteboard, I remember all I wanted to lose in the beginning was 50 pounds. I'm like, this is a gargantuan task. So instead of saying, I'm going to lose 200 pounds, I had to set a goal. It doesn't work when someone's like, I'm going to lose weight. Well, what, how much? I mean, what, what's, what's your deal? Like, what, what do you want to do? You know, and for me, this is, at this point, I had to lose weight specifically for my health. It wasn't just being healthy. I had to lose weight because I was so heavy that it was dangerous, you know. And so I had a goal on the board, and that goal was 50. I just had this number on the board, and I would weigh myself every single Monday morning, and I would, if I lost two pounds, I'd go up to that 50, I'd erase it, and I'd put 48, right? I had a goal. I had this thing at the end of the line that was my goal. Kind of like when you build virtue, your goal is beatitude. Even if you never get to beatitude, building those virtues along the way help you in your spiritual life. And so I had this number, and I focused on that, and I would walk, I would eat right. My friends would come over, I'd do as many of the, you know, as much of the workout as I could, I didn't really focus on, I have to do this. I just did as much as I could, and I stayed disciplined. I was consistent. I did what I could do five times a week. That's, it wasn't seven days a week. I took Sundays off, you know, and Saturdays I usually would go out with my family, you know, swimming or doing something like that. But five days a week I had a regimen, and I stuck with it. And then after, I, after four or five months of just sticking with a regimen of doing what I could, I ended up getting that 50 down to a zero. And I remember the day that I got to a zero, I went up to the board and instead of just celebrating saying it's over, I added a zero next to it. And on the opposite side, I put the number one. Now I had another goal and that was another 100 pounds, you know, and I just kept doing that. And before you knew it, then it became exciting because then I could do an entire workout. I could do an entire thing and not just do part of it. Then it became fun because then I could challenge my friends of who could do the most pushups, you know, who could lift the most weights, right? And it took that process, though, of just doing what you could. Even if it was only bite-sized amounts of the workout, it was essential to working towards that goal, kind of climbing up that mountain slowly. Yeah, and having, having a workout partner or something is, is always great to have, too. But, the, you know, so, so the thing is, is, is it's consistency. The virtue is, the, the catechism says, it's a habit. Right. It's, a, it's consistency. And, and sometimes you blow it and you don't do it, but that's not a reason not to get up and, and go for it again and, 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 and keep always, like, even if you fall back, if, you, if it's three steps forward and one step back, you're still moving oh, forward. Oh, and trust me, that number, it went from 50 down to 40, back to 45, down to 38. I mean, it went up and down, that number right. on my board. Right. But, but you, you just got to keep moving forward. I think having that goal, and every day for me when I'm, you know, every day I've checked my weight. I'm always logging my weight every single day. I've done that for years. And, uh, and I'm always, uh, and every day I have a goal what I want that weight to be. You know, I have it in mind every day. And then it becomes like a game. It's like you're keeping right. score. We're talking with Dallas Carter. He's a catechist for the Diocese of Honolulu. He rose Gracie style, father of five, soon to be a father of six. He's going to be a cast member of Long Ride Home Season 3 that we'll shoot, be shooting here in Hawaii. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today uh, studied theology at University of Steubenville. He is a uh, Gracie style uh, grappler. He's going to be rolling later today. But if you don't know Gracie style rolling is when you hit the mat and you and you're actually doing some jujitsu fighting. And uh, 
And he and now so here here's the question, uh, Dallas. How good is Jason Jones really when he rolls? <laughs> <laughs> so Jason is a legit tie fighter. He's he is phenomenal stand up, and you know he can he can roll too. We're gonna get together later on this summer and work on some ground game. He's he's asked for my help a little bit on some things, but uh, uh, if you look him up on YouTube, he has some legit fights. That guy can kick. Do not get kicked by Jason Jones. <laughs> I know. He, I mean, dude, his his kicks. I mean, he could do a, probably a spinning crescent kick over my head uh but he he represented the united states uh, i know over in japan at the big international uh i forget what it's called but it was it's a full contact type situation but we love him because he's he's uh just so uh, vitally involved in the pro-life movement right. and but he's one of our brothers here in the islands absolutely so he's going to be we're, we're going to be you he's a cast member too so you'll be you'll be joining up what were you going to say dallas no, it, it, it's great that Jason Jason goes around the world protecting the unborn, fighting for you know life from conception unto natural death, and he he's all over the world as you are uh, doing things. And it's great that when he comes home, we just get together and watch some MMA together. You know, have a beer, just hang out. You know, yeah, it's, it's just great. He, his sense of humor is amazing. You know, he came down to Waikiki Beach over Memorial Day weekend with his keiki, and it was so cool. And his beautiful wife Alexandria. And it was so cool because we took his kids out surfing. Have you have have your kids been surfing? Yeah, no, my my daughter's quite quite a surfer. In fact, one of her favorite spots is actually not too far from uh, Queens. We actually go a little bit to the left down to Publix. And, really? You know, yep. Yeah, and she we go maybe uh, especially during the summertime. We're there almost every Sunday. Right after right after mass, we all head out there. We have a barbecue, and the kids go out and surf. And you know, it's. We're not a gigantic surfing family, but if you live here, it's part of your you life. You surf, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of the kids now they have the, these little these spongy surfboards. Yeah, those wave storms are great. They are yeah. awesome. I know my son Jeremiah. You know, like he's he surfed eighty foot surf. He got towed in by Crazy Todd Robertson, uh, two thousand and seven. The biggest surf in they say forty years. He rides huge waves, right? But he's all excited about this. What is it called? The wave. <laughs> He Wave loves, storm, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. goes to the sandy, like uh, not sandy beach. I forget where, but you know the sandy beach breaks, mm -hmm. and you can ride a surfboard there. You don't have to use uh, fins to, to right. kick with a boogie board. You can paddle in, and then if the board hits you in the face, it's probably not going to kill you because it's spongy. That's right. That's right <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's so. Hey, ne next time you come down, let us know. Um, this yeah. Sunday I won't be because I'm doing my pro oblate profession up at the monastery, but. Yeah, the next Sunday, maybe we can hook up with you. Yeah, guys. I think Jason might be actually up at the All Blade. Jason Jones might be. Uh, he's speaking at mine. He's right, speaking yeah. at mine. Yeah, just coincidentally. But it was so cool taking his, his kid, his sons out and seeing them catch catch their first waves. And it was just, just awesome. That's great. Dude. Okay, so let's talk about. I, I want to change the subject. We've been talking about your weight loss uh, and, and, and the summer and, and that great. Uh, the, the change in lifestyle. You look so vibrantly healthy now. Thank you. Just like I wouldn't want to roll with you, for example. <laughs> I want to. Hey, did you know I was trained in ninjutsu by Master Stephen Hayes? I heard. I heard, and I heard you're a black belt, too. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I got a black belt. No, I trained in a lot of different martial arts, and I, I, I also used to roll every, you know, we it, it with ninjutsu, there is a, there's a grappling element to it. Mm -hmm. But we used to roll Gracie style, too. I used to uh, work out with Andre Derrison here. But, uh, awesome. yeah, just wasn't my I, – I just got tired of my neck hurting all the time. Yeah, no, I, I actually, got you. Yeah. Actually, I, I had got a, kind of a paper cut, so I had to stop. <laughs> but, no, yeah. I, 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 lo I love, uh, I love uh, Andre and, uh, and uh, you know, lo love the, the Brazilian element here in, here in uh, islands. Tell yeah. me about, though, your, your recent work at, um, your, 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 uh, up at the St. Michael's Catholic School it's up by the monastery. It's up. It's up on the North Shore. What's tra well, first of all? You weren't working in a Catholic high school or in a Catholic school, and you became, uh, I guess, uh, dismayed that they weren't being true to the magisterium. Tell us about this whole thing. That yeah, you know. So I I've been teaching for the diocese for quite a while for the diocesan office of religious education, but I was also a school teacher for many years. And even though I loved the schools I was a part of, the principals were great. You know, I just in general, I was, you know, kind of uh, disillusioned about the Catholic, about the Catholic school system. I've, I've heard, I think it's attributed to um, Bishop Sheen. He said, if you want your kids to have their faith damaged, send them to public schools. If you want them to lose their faith, send them to Catholic schools. And it's because of the fact that, you know, 
we the lack of catechesis, we have slowly but surely kind of fallen away from delivering the fullness of the faith. And I was disillusioned by that. I said, you know what, I'm going to teach for the diocese, but I, the Catholic school is just not my thing. Well, anyway, one of my dear friends um, who is a wonderful musician, he's, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the diocese even, he, he's Bishop Silva's, you know, you know, one of his private musicians for some of the liturgies he does. He was asked to be the principal at this very small, you know, country school out on uh, in Wailua called St. Michael's. And when I heard he was going to be a part of it, a brother of mine, you know, really, I, I want to be a part of that. So we worked out a deal where I'd come in just, you know, twice a week. It wasn't a full-time thing. I, I run businesses. It's hard to pay for a mortgage here just being a teacher. But I ran some businesses, and I wanted to go teach twice a week. And in a period of just one, you know, half a school year, of a school of 85, we had 22 people who wanted to enter the Catholic Church. 22 students who on their own, it wasn't a question where we said, who wants to become Catholic? Who wants to be baptized? It was just a, a process of teaching them the fullness of the faith, teaching them about how awesome the sacraments are and about how awesome the Eucharist is, the, the, the real presence of Christ. And we had 17 of those students who were not baptized, weren't you know any form of Christian, and they asked on their own if they could become Catholic. And so uh, earlier this year in April, right after the Easter, I think it was the week after Easter, Bishop Silva himself came down there, and we had 17 students baptized in one day, 17 students baptized into the Catholic faith. And then we had five others who made either a profession of faith or you know, were received fully into the faith uh, based on whatever sacraments they did not yet have. And it was just an amazing thing. And the thing that that school does that I'm so proud of, and I, I want people who are watching this to know, is there, is there are schools, and we're one, even if we're out in the, you know, near the monastery, kind of out in the country there, there are still schools out there that are Catholic first. You know and, that, yeah. And it seems to me like the, the, the churches that are really thriving now are those that are true to the magisterium of the church. Absolutely. They're, they're, not, they're not watering it down. They're, you know, right now, I, you know, I teach from the catechism every morning. I don't know if you know I do that. Um, I've been doing it for almost, well, well over a year and a half. Awesome. And we read it line by line, and we, you know, we take our time. It, we're, not, we're a little over halfway through now. But we're getting into some pretty chewy subjects now, like the moral, moral acts and things like that. And, mm. and the catechism doesn't water it down. Uh, you know, Doesn't. why should we? Um, so go ahead. No, you, but you nailed it on the head, Bear. People, young adults, young people, what they want is truth. They want it. It's attractive. And if you give it to them, it's not too hard for them to handle. Just give them that truth. And, you know, it, it opens up their heart. It's amazing to see these little, little uh, seventh graders who are just in love with the catechism. They can quote the catechism. They can quote the Bible. And it's not because I'm requiring them to. It's just because they're in love with it. And it's because they have truth and they're fascinated by it. Well, let me say this, Dallas. Also, you're a man. Men have left have, have you know left the building. You know, and there, there's some men that I think Joshua Shoup is one of the men that I know. Uh, he, he challenged him and a couple of his, of his friends to uh, teach catechism this coming fall to get involved with men teaching catechism so that young men and women can see that real men can love Jesus. I know you hear you're a Gracie style roller and you're teaching catechism. It's so great that a man is teaching it because we've like left the building and said, well, let the women do it, but we need both men and women involved. But you said it when I think wasn't it St. Augustine had said, you know, truth doesn't need to defend itself. It's like a lion. Just let That's it out right. of its cage, basically. That's right. And yeah. people, people recognize it. They do. They, they, they absolutely do. And I, I think you're absolutely right, though, Bear. I think, you know, in some of my mission work and some of my catechetical work, every time I find a child or an adult that seems to have difficulty accepting the love of God or accepting, uh, you know, something like the mercy of God, it often comes down to the fact that growing up and in their life, they don't have you know, uh, a fatherly figure that has been that example for them. How can you fully receive the love of God the Father if you don't understand the example of the love and the guidance of a father here on earth, you know? And so when men stand up and when men become the head of their family and lead them to the foot of the cross, they'll the, the children go, they will. So yes, you're right. We need more men to step up 
you know, put down the beer can, put down the remote control, and teach some catechism for sure. And I know pray the rosary together. Uh, Absolutely, every things, day. Things like that. You, you pray as a family. I think it was uh, Scott Hahn was saying when he they were first starting to do that, they would always have dinner together and they would pray one decade of the rosary. And then after a while, before they were they knew it, they were praying the full rosary, which to me is, hey, Dels, we got to go. That's crazy. We're going to have to have so you back. Fast. We're yeah. going to have to have you back. We're talking with Dallas Carter. He's a catechist at the Diocese of Honolulu. He's drinking coffee cup, a coffee cup out of what is that you're drinking there? Is that Seattle or Denver? What is That's that? That's Denver, man. He's a Denver Bronco fan, apparently. I I'm am. Drinking, I'm drinking out of my coffee cup the, with a Hawaiian honu on it, the sea turtle. For I those know. of you who were wondering how we can see each other, well, you can see us too if you go to our YouTube channel and uh, you can watch the archive shows there. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Get some stuff for the men in your life for Father's Day. Till uh, next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Let's say aloha, Dallas. Aloha. 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 Okay, aloha, everybody. We'll see you next week.